this bitter earth Well, what the fruit it bears What good is love? I read a book, a Fahrenheit 451 by Ray Bradbury, and it was one of the first things that introduced me to like reading in a way that I never thought it could be. And today, June 5th, marks the third anniversary of his passing. I wouldn't be the person I am without his, without his work. So I'd like to dedicate this to him, and it's untitled. I was halfway through watching Gone Girl, which by the way is a horrible movie, don't watch it, when I noticed the time. It was a little after 12, which meant that it's technically 2015 now. So even though I wasn't much for celebration, I went off to the roof, I went off to the roof to listen to the voices of my hometown welcoming in the new year. Somehow a feeling that I might not be here next time around washed over me, along with the realization that this could very, very well be the last time I hear the sound of a city collectively coming together for a common celebration. Soon after that, I couldn't stop thinking about the fact that even though there were four other Nuras before me, my mother still insisted on this name. She still insisted on Nura. Maybe she said something when she was pregnant with me that made her think that having a little bit more light in my life would help me somehow. I don't know how to tell her that it didn't, because a because eight years after my diagnosis, and I still don't feel entitled to this depression, as if it was something I needed to fulfill a certain quota to even qualify for. But it doesn't work that way. It doesn't. It does not work that way, right? And yeah, okay, my father may never been around, but at least I have a mother who knew when to leave a failed marriage, and he used to work six days a week just so my brother and I would never want for anything along with a grandfather who showed me what a good man is without ever needing to utter a word. So really, how does it make sense that there are days I wake up with so much empty inside of me, I wonder if my body is as hollow as it feels, or days with so much heavy, I'm surprised that I can walk without leaving earthquakes in my way. And why is it? that I need to keep reminding myself that a tragic backstory isn't needed to validate this depression. And why is it that I can't even talk about it without feeling an obligation to sugarcoat it with metaphors so it becomes easier to swallow? Maybe, maybe it's because no one wants to hear about how stability tastes like chalk, how the 20 milligrams of Avifi had to be broken to pieces, how the 40 milligrams of Prozac can only be washed down with orange juice that even with the help of Concerta, I could not stay in any university long enough to get a degree. And how I keep a Xanax in every single bag I own. Listen, it's been eight years. It's been almost 3,000 days. It's been six years in three different high schools. It's been three different universities. It's been a job that never panned out. And through it all, my brain has never once stopped treating my body as if it's a battleground that I can't help but wonder if the war I never enlisted to be a part of will ever end, that I can't help but wonder if I even wanted to. And that's what poetry is all about, people. Show her some love for exposing herself and her feelings tonight. We love you, Nora. We love you. The realest poetry comes from right here. We appreciate you what making yourself home for your family. Heaven only knows. 